you're planning on moving from TikTok to YouTube or just adding YouTube to your agenda, YouTube is a way better place to grow a more dedicated audience, which translates into far more monetization opportunities than you will ever find on TikTok. Yeah, we've helped people make hundreds and even thousands of dollars with fewer than 500 subscribers and grow their channels to earn over 200 per thousand views. That's 200 RPMs is crazy. We're going to give you our complete six week plan for taking your success on TikTok and bringing it onto YouTube so you don't have to start from scratch. By the end of six weeks, you'll have your most dedicated followers watching your YouTube content and a YouTube strategy tailored for the YouTube algorithm. Not only that, but you'll be well on your way to monetizing your audience in ways you never have before. Okay, now that that's out of the way, there's a lot of information that we're gonna be sharing here. So don't be afraid to pause the video, go back if you need to, and certainly take notes so that you get this right. Kicking it off with week one, the foundation. The approach you take on this week depends on your current baseline on TikTok. So if you have over 50,000 views on average, feel free to keep doing shorts on YouTube instead of long form videos and adjust the rest of this plan accordingly. However, if you have less than that, which I'm guessing is most of you watching, we strongly, strongly recommend you focus mostly on long form content on YouTube. I know that's maybe not what you wanna hear. You're a short form creator, you aren't used to that, but trust us, it'll be so much better in the long run. YouTube is just really built for long form creators. Yeah, so unless you're bringing over a very large audience from TikTok, try to do at least 80% long form at a minimum. Here are all the action steps you're gonna to need to take for your first week. First is to pick a topic. If your TikTok is in a very specific niche, go figure out what long form videos you could post on YouTube in that same niche. And if you are like a lifestyle creator on TikTok, then go find out how that can translate into long form content. A little tip for this is to look at other YouTube channels to see what they're doing. You can take inspiration from their videos. If you're not niched down, you can pick a part of your content that you're most excited about. For example, if you do recipes or gardening and like home decor, you could cut it down to just recipes and gardening, or maybe you could just do the cooking side. Yeah, so as you go through and you're evaluating your current TikTok content, we want you to make a list of videos that could be repurposed for YouTube. And that maybe means using the old footage, but it might also mean just remaking the video, but it's already a good idea that you've already made. And try to get like 10 to 20 of these video ideas that could be five to 10 minutes long each. So people often go to YouTube for educational type things or just thought provoking videos, even if they're presented in a really entertaining way. So ask what previous content of yours is the most enriching or at least could be if presented in the right way. And what would be easiest to expand upon? Have you made videos where people ask for more context or more instruction, or maybe you've just had a hard time cutting it down to a short TikTok because you were so excited about the content and you had so much to share. Those are the types of videos that are gonna work really well to repurpose. All right, let's talk skills here that you're gonna need. Number one is just developing your channel topics and your video types. Honestly, this is just gonna be an ongoing process that will take some time for you to work out. But learning to look at ideas through a lens of retention and providing more value is the best way to go about it. A YouTube video needs to be satisfying because people invest more time in watching more satisfying videos. One way to go about this is by evaluating what's working in your own niche and putting your own unique spin on some of those ideas. Understand that most of your TikTok audience will not be loyal enough to follow you, even if they really like you. That's just that's okay, that's how it works. Don't try to please the masses, but rather think about your interests and what you enjoy the most and lean into those. It's gonna work way better in the long run. Should we go on to week two? I think so, let's do it. Okay, so week two is our press publish week. Now, we've got some caveats to that, we're gonna explain it. So now you're in week two and this is where the rubber hits the road. There's a lot to get done in this week. Like this one is the marathon week. You'll have to really make a dedicated effort to get it all done. Here are the tasks for the week. You're going to work on getting all of the technical YouTube setup stuff out of the way. If you've been on TikTok for a while, you should already have most of this. You'll have like some kind of logo image you really like, maybe something you could repurpose for a banner on YouTube, even though the exact dimensions will be a little bit different. But you also wanna do all the other details like your about page and things like that. This will be really important once you start sending your followers over because you want them to feel like your channel is familiar and recognize you right away. The familiarity will help encourage them to stick around. If at all possible, try to get this done in a day or two days max. I know That's that sounds key. quick. Yeah. If you take too long on this, you are going to be getting way behind in this plan because while this is an important piece, it is not the most important piece. Exactly. Don't let it take too long. One more important tip, make sure you make your YouTube channel a brand account. We've learned from experience that you can change it over later if you don't start with a brand account, but it's hard to do. And that'll probably change. YouTube settings are always changing, but just look up how to do that if you don't see an obvious choice when you're making your account to make sure you've got that right. Here's the thing, you might want to spend all of your time making your channel look perfect. And while that's great, it's just not the most important piece. What you really need to spend the majority of your time doing this week is your video planning. 
and after that you're filming and after that some editing so that you can start publishing as soon as possible. We get it, this feels super, super fast, but having multiple pieces of content on your channel is critical. So if you can, just push through and get out as much as possible. If you need to extend the plan an extra week or so to allow yourself to get multiple videos published, that's fine. Just make sure that you are working on this as quickly as possible. For these next few weeks, you should honestly try and shoot at least one to two videos and publish them every week to build up your channel's library. So this week you'll be outlining, filming, and editing at least one to two videos. The publishing frequency on YouTube can vary a lot, and we don't want to tell you there's one right way, but at least to start, if you can do one or two, that's great because you can build up that library. In the future, we do think that about one to two videos a week is a really good baseline if you're not sure. If you're not sure how often you want to publish on YouTube, that's a pretty safe bet for growing well on YouTube, but your publishing schedule might look different. Whatever you do, try to be consistent. Okay, I know we're giving you a lot, but now at the same time as you're working on your new YouTube videos, you should still be publishing consistently on TikTok. And those TikTok videos, you should start hinting to your followers that you're working on something new and exciting for them, but don't tell them what it is yet. That's the trick here, because the mentions alone will make them really curious. So whether you're publishing multiple times a week or even multiple times a day, at least half of your videos on TikTok should include hints of some sort about this channel. Try to mix it up and keep it interesting so it doesn't feel stale. And if you feel like you're overdoing it, don't be afraid to pull back a little before hinting again. All right, let's take a second to talk about a few of the skills you're gonna need for week two. The big ones here are editing and storytelling, and those tie really closely together. You've likely become really good at editing your short form content, which is awesome. And you aren't starting from square one since that's the case, but editing and storytelling for long form content on YouTube is just a little different. And the truth is it's gonna take some time to learn what it takes to do that on YouTube, but here are a few ways to speed up the process. So earlier we mentioned going and looking at some other channels in your niche. Go back to some of those channels you looked at and watch some of their videos, but only focusing on the editing and the storytelling. Note down the things that stand out to you and maybe include some things that you would have naturally cut out or some things that you would have left in that you feel would have held the viewer's interest. Doing this is going to help you think like a long form creator and over time editing and storytelling will become easier and easier. Experiment with different editing styles or even storytelling elements. Even if the videos are way different than what you'd normally do, you might actually find you like it. Uh, and once people start watching your videos, they'll leave feedback for you and that can also help you determine the style that you like. Yeah, I love I love experimenting like that. I'm just trying things. And sometimes they work out and sometimes they don't. So don't stress it. Like you're gonna figure out your groove and what works and what doesn't and what the audience likes. Just give things a try. Yep, don't stress about it. It's gonna work. So some tips for week two is as you're filming, plan to film with your edits in mind. Don't give yourself a video that's gonna be really hard to get out quickly. You don't wanna have a ton of edits. So use whatever you already have. Don't go buy new lighting and mics or cameras right now. Most of what you need, honestly, for a YouTube channel, you will likely already have if you've been doing TikTok. You have a phone and maybe you have a decent mic, just adapt when needed. If your audio sounds really bad, then yeah, get another mic, but try to use what you already have. So I know that's a ton for week two, but don't overthink it. That's the trick to actually getting through it. On week three, you are going to be publishing on YouTube. So this week you're going to keep working on your publishing tasks from week two, planning, filming, editing, title and thumbnails, all of that. And you're also going to keep teasing your new project to your TikTok audience. Maybe give little behind the scenes or updates on what you're working on. And again, keep them interested. Just do what feels right. Okay, something that's really important here is you are publishing on YouTube now, but I want to just make it very clear. Do not tell your audience on TikTok yet. If you publish your first video on YouTube, you're going to be really excited. But once you see that you don't get any views, it might feel really disappointing. And you might be really, really interested in sending some traffic over there to get some views, but that's not what you should do. That's actually going to really harm this whole six week program. So don't do that yet. Just hold off and wait till you have a little bit more content. And we're gonna tell you exactly when to tell your TikTok audience. Yeah, so two things to kind of console you about those really low view numbers you're likely gonna get. You're probably thinking that you already know how to make good content if you've been a content creator for a long time. And I am sure that's true, however, there are two factors. One is it just takes a while for the algorithm to figure out what you're about, who your people are, and show them your channel. It takes the algorithm, this computer, a minute to figure that out, even if your videos are already amazing. The other thing is that long form content, even what people go to YouTube to watch is just different than TikTok. And so it's gonna take you a little bit of time to understand YouTube strategy and build those skills, even if you're already good at content. So don't feel bad, you're gonna get better. Those views will go up with time. Now, in addition to everything else we've just told you for this week, you are going to want to increase your visibility on TikTok and on YouTube. So when people comment on any of your accounts, respond to all of them. If you have people tag you in something, go interact with that content. 
Uh, the goal here is to make people feel like you are as interactive as you've ever been on your platforms. When you interact with people individually, it makes them feel that much more connected to you and your brand. So if you're wondering how much time you should spend on this, just do as much as you can without completely burning yourself out. It will make such a big impact in the early stages of your channel and it's just really important. Now it's time for week four. You're getting so far here. Like, have you made way. it this far? Yeah, you're doing great. And the hardest part is honestly over. So this week you're going to officially launch. That means with your TikTok audience. So hopefully you've already published at least three videos, a minimum of three videos, maybe even four on your new YouTube channel. But, and you're, you know, you're getting a little bit of YouTube views from it, but you haven't officially launched by telling your TikTok audience. So now you're gonna make a few dedicated videos on TikTok about your YouTube channel and your regular TikTok videos make mentions of it and consider going live to explain why you're starting a YouTube channel. With this, I think the best strategy is to be really open and honest. If you're worried that TikTok maybe won't be around forever, say that. If you're just kind of wanting to get more into the thick of deeper content, you can say that. Whatever the truth is, be really open with your audience and they're gonna appreciate it. This is super, super exciting. It's gonna be awesome for you to tell the people who are already following you that you're starting something new and all the marketing and teasing you've done up until this point is going to make it so this launch goes perfectly. All right, a couple skills you're gonna need for this week. Time management is going to be key. And this one's honestly not my strong suit, but I know it's very important. You need to keep your content consistently coming out on YouTube. You need to learn to engage with your audience and not take the negative comments to heart, but also while evaluating their constructive criticism. And a little bit of a tip here, if you're up to the challenge, commit to your new YouTube publishing schedule publicly. Some fun ways to do that is to put it in your banner or to put it in the description or in a pinned comment, but be ready to stick to it. Staying consistent on YouTube is quite a challenge, but if you're a seasoned creator, you can do it. This next week, week five, is all about building your community, which is a big deal on YouTube. So now that your channel is launched, it's important that your audience can come to rely on you. And that doesn't mean you have to publish two times a week for the rest of your life without ever missing a single day, but it does mean keeping them in the loop. If you're working on something and it's taking longer than expected, tell them. If you are super excited about an idea, but you're not sure if it's gonna work, ask for their help, get feedback on what they want. So by doing things like this, you make them feel like they are part of your tribe on YouTube. So of course, try and publish when you tell them you're going to, but if and honestly, when things go wrong, it'll be okay because you're usually consistent, you're open and transparent with your audience and they are loyal at that point. Something that's gonna help you stay generally consistent throughout your journey on YouTube is just by making sure you have a running list of video ideas, at least 15 to 20 of them. They should be ideas that you're super excited about and that you think your audience is really gonna like too. And as time goes on, you're gonna be able to look at your analytics on the back end of your YouTube channel and see how well your ideas are actually working with the audience. But for now, in the early days, just be really passionate about the videos you're creating and execute the technical parts of the videos to the best of your abilities. These lights are so hot. So some of you will decide to continue publishing on TikTok and some of you won't. Regardless, you should focus on keeping your viewers coming back to your YouTube channel. YouTube is very dependent on repeat viewers. Making videos on YouTube that are interconnected might help with that. So mentioning old videos in your new videos will help you to kind of get people interested in all of your content on YouTube. And YouTube also allows you to choose a watch next video for your audience, which is gonna help as well. All of these things make your average views per viewer go up and YouTube really likes that. So try to do it and it'll show you have a healthy channel with your content that your audience likes. And a side note, for those of you who do keep publishing on TikTok, keep making pushes to your YouTube channel over time for the largest benefit, even if it's more infrequent at this point. All right, we've covered so much in this video so far. Hopefully you guys aren't too overwhelmed, but to be completely honest, there's even more than what we've covered in this video that goes into creating a successful channel on YouTube. We've created a complete step-by-step -step system called Project 24 to help you achieve every single milestone. And if you want more dedicated help than just this video, go check out Project 24. It's worked for tons of creators and honestly, it can work for you too. So we really want you to double down on your community building. And this week you're gonna try to figure out like new ways of doing that. So try out new ways of interacting with your audience like community posts or going live on your channel. That can be really fun, even collabs. So if you have a lot of TikTok clout, you could use that to persuade bigger YouTubers to collaborate with you. If you don't have a big following on either platform, but 
you're reasonably niched down onto a specific topic, look for some podcasts on your topic and apply to be a guest. You'd be surprised how easy it can be to get on a podcast, even if you don't have much of a reputation, if you really have valuable knowledge about your topic. So to break that into tasks for this week, you're going to test out new YouTube features like community posts or YouTube lives. You're going to try to reach out to other creators in a similar space about collaborating, or you could just kind of comment on their channel and show them some support if you're not ready to like ask for a collaboration yet and continue to interact regularly with your audience. All right, it is week six now, and this is all about monetization on YouTube. There's a ton that goes into this, but one of the ways that you can start is to just start investigating what free or paid resources, services, or products your audience might like. Look at what other big creators in your niche are offering and then ask your audience when it feels natural and ask them what types of things they are wanting. Um, there's so many different ways to monetize a YouTube channel, so it could look like a very wide variety of things. Yeah, so to give you some ideas, you're probably already familiar if you've been on TikTok for a while with making money through affiliates or ads. Honestly, on YouTube, ads don't do that well. They're not going to make you a lot of money unless you just... Better than TikTok, though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, oh man. Yeah, so <laughs> maybe, maybe you can make some from ads, but some of our favorite ways to monetize are actually not ads and not even necessarily affiliates. Some of our favorite ways are things like Patreon, where the paid members of your audience are going to get bonus content from you. That can work really well for like entertainment type channels. And we really like doing kind of like consulting and info products. Yeah, the consulting works awesome if it's if you're good at something. You don't have to be like a professional per se, but if you know something like a lot about something more than the average person does, you can just so easily drop a little Calendly link in the description of your videos and then you can monetize in that way for like 20 or 30 or $50 an hour, you could consult people. And info products honestly is one of my personal favorites. At the beginning of the video, Julia, you mentioned that on some of our channels we're making over $200 per thousand views on YouTube. The way that we do that is through info products. And that could be a wide variety of things, whether it's like selling a download or a course or anything in between, info products are fantastic. Yeah, for some context on that, the average like revenue per thousand views on YouTube, we just have done a lot of research on this for a video, is $7.23 yeah. and we're over 200. Yeah. So like there's no comparison with how much you can make through these other methods versus just doing YouTube ads. I think it's also important to know that even though your channel on YouTube is gonna be really small, there are a lot of people monetizing very small channels on YouTube. So even if you only have 500 or 1,000 subscribers, you can still make hundreds or even thousands of dollars. You don't have to have a ginormous audience to make good money. So action steps for this is gonna look a little different depending on where you're at and what kind of things you're selling. But I just wanna tell you, like if you think you're not ready to monetize yet, please reconsider. Maybe you're right. Maybe you aren't quite ready yet. But I think more often than not, people think they aren't ready to monetize when they actually are. In fact, we have a video about how a lot of our Project 24 members are making a lot of money with under 500 subscribers on YouTube. That's not even enough to qualify for the YouTube partner program. That's not enough to qualify for ads on your YouTube channel under 500 subscribers and they're making a lot of money. Yes, so think outside the box. Think about what you can just implement on a small scale. People do the best with products or selling things to their audience usually when they do like a little bit of a beta test first and they figure out what's working and what their audience likes and they adjust from there. You don't wanna launch some big physical product right off the bat if you don't really know what your audience is gonna want or if you're not sure but just get started. Just like be brave, put that link in your description for some consulting or make a Patreon page and it might not get traction at first. It might not do anything. And then you don't have to be scared, but it might. And then you'll make some money for your YouTube channel right away within six weeks of starting this six week program. And I think that's so exciting. And if you have like thought about it and you really don't want to try any monetizing, at least implementing any monetizing right now, I would encourage you, your action step this week should be to do some market research. Try to come up with ideas of how you could someday monetize. Try to get some feedback from your audience of what they might like more of or someday be willing to pay for and try to make a long-term plan hopefully not too long-term, but a plan for monetizing in the future. All right, your six weeks is up, you've completed the plan, but we wanted to tell you a little bit about going forward, what to look out for. There are really two paths here going forward. Number one is that YouTube becomes your primary focus. And then number two is that YouTube is just a secondary focus in your business. So if YouTube becomes your primary, you should start diving into your analytics to see what's working on your channel. YouTube gives us so much data and we can use it to improve our videos and decide what videos we need to make in the future. Two of the most important analytics to focus on here are the click-through rate and watch time. 
Put your focus on improving your videos in ways that will improve these analytics. For example, click through rate. It will most likely be learning to make better thumbnails that stop people scrolling on YouTube and create curiosity. As a rule of thumb, simple thumbnails are often better. Also, make sure that the title plays an important role and isn't just a repetition of what the thumbnail is showing. So for thumbnails, there's tons of information out there, but here's a great video that I love that teaches some really great core principles about thumbnail creation. Yeah, I know we're like throwing you in the deep end and we're saying just make videos on YouTube. This is more like your action step plan with some helpful tips that are specifically relevant to TikTokers. But we have so many videos on YouTube strategy because it is so in-depth. There is so many like little tricks and strategies and things that are going to put you ahead of the competition. And we've already made the videos on that. So we're not going to rehash it all here. But if you like want to know how to make a killer thumbnail, go check out our playlist about that. If you're trying to figure out the planning process or scripting or how to be on camera, we have videos about those kinds of things. So go watch that for more ideas on how to really implement this strategy as you go through the six week plan and these action steps. Opportunity on YouTube is huge because it is a platform that gives you so many options for building a really loyal community. And in our opinion, that is the best just for maintaining a large audience and monetizing. And so YouTube is better than a lot of the other social platforms. If you want to make it part of your brand, we really think it's going to be a great thing that you're not going to regret. And if you have questions, we are going to be in the comments trying to answer every single one of them. We really wanna be there for you as you start out your YouTube journey. So. Hit us up there and we will get back to you.